Now, after you've prepared your slate and brushed it off real good, you want to lay your cloth out on the table. I like to do this process here at, at the last cleaning of the table. Swap your cloth back and forth. It just makes sure there's no trash left on the table. Shake your cloth off. Look at the back side of it. Make sure you have no strings or threads or any foreign material on the back side of this cloth. The least little thing will seem like a boulder under it once you get this cloth stretched and on the slate. Now lay your cloth out. Cut you a piece about an inch off the end of the cloth. We're going to use this for our pocket liners in the table. What these pocket liners are for is they serve two purposes. One is when the ball hits the pocket, it'll bounce back and hit that slate. That'll be the easiest place for the cloth to tear. We'll give it a little extra protection here. And also when you're putting your cloth on in each pocket when you're stapling the pocket down, I don't like to see any wood in my pockets. So we put these pocket liners in so when we cut our cloth, we'll be sure not to see any of the exposed MDF board or or the slate in the in the pocket. Just take this strip of cloth, measure you off a, a piece in the side pocket, cut you two pieces to fit the side pocket, and you'll cut four pieces to fit the corner pockets. Here's where you use your Super 77 again. I like to take a bag, maybe that the cloth come out of or something, put my hand in it so I can hold it up on the table. You don't get any glue on the table. You don't get any on the customer's floor. You just spray each one of these pockets. It doesn't take a lot of glue to hold these pieces of cloth in. Then put your pocket liners in. Be sure not to have that pocket liner up above your pocket here. It, it needs to be below that ledge of the pocket. If it's sticking up too high, it'll stop the ball when it's rolling and you can you'll be real easy to see it once you've pulled that pocket tight. Now I like to lay out a few runs of staples. Now we're going to get started with the cloth. I know there's a lot of different ways to put cloth on a table. And after time and time again of putting it on, you'll have your own way that you stretch your cloth and put it on the table. This is the way I do it. The next guy will do it a different way. He'll say, my way is not right. But the most important part here is to get the cloth tight. So when you're putting your initial corners on, you want to be sure and you know put several staples there to hold it as you pull it. I staple mine on each end. Then I go back and pull it to the center pocket. This is where you want to have slack in the pocket. So when it's time to, to do the pockets, you'll have enough cloth there to do it. See these all these wrinkles in the cloth ends line up. Make sure your center mark lines up. Make sure you can see your mark good. You do this so you'll know where the center of the rail is as you're putting your cloth under the feather strip. Lay your cloth across the rail. Now when you put this feather strip in here, you don't want to be too e you don't want to be easy putting this feather strip in, but you don't want to be too aggressive. But when you line the center of it up, you want to give it a good firm lick to get it in that groove. Hold that feather strip down so it's not flopping around. You have to be real careful here. This you don't want to pound this feather strip all the way in at first. That gives you a ledge to cut against. Now you'll notice that I keep the end of my rubber mallets covered with some pool table cloth. I don't like to use a pounding block because inadvertently one, one of the guys are going to just pound the top of a rail and just beat it all to pieces. So I just like to use my rubber hammer, get your feather strip down flush. Now it's time to pull the cloth and staple it on the bottom side. This is where you want to be sure that staple is in that relief groove around the bottom of the rail. I'll take my cloth on the corner pockets, pull it at a, about a 45 degree angle out from the corner to put my first staple in. 
then you want to pull this cloth from the end of the rail back to the center of the rail. Here you want to pull it from the center of the rail back to the end of the rail. This will eliminate any wrinkles. This cloth needs to be tight on this rail but not tight enough as to deform the rubber on the rail. On the side pockets you will fold your cloth on the on the side pocket pull it tight and do your stapling here several people do this different ways this is the way that we do it be sure and put you a couple of staples on the end you want to get these staples on the end close enough to the backing pad there that it's that cloth doesn't extend out to get in in the way of the pocket when it goes in that pocket hole there. <laughs> 